The movie is The Fate of the Furious. Hits theaters next Friday, April 14th. Joining us, uh, Tyrese. He stars along with Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, The Rock. Got uh, Helen Mirren. Let's see who else you got. Charlize <laughs> Theron. You got a, it's quite a, it, it's quite a crew. Uh, you got Ludacris is back again. Who else am I leaving out here? Um, well, we got a newcomer, Scott Eastwood. Um, we got Jason Statham coming back. Yeah. Uh, Charlize is is scary, the sexiest, scariest woman I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it's a crazy crew, man. We, we're very, very proud. It's, we, we're under more pressure than, than most people could ever imagine because after the success of the last one, it's like, how do you follow that just in general? But uh, it seems to be a lot of energy out there, and, and people just, just love this franchise and hope it never goes away. Who's the character or actor who's more like their character? Um... Well, Vin, Vin. I mean, me and me and Vin. Well, Dwayne. A lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not like Dwayne takes his muscles off at the end of every shoot. You know what I mean? It's not like he doesn't wear baby oil when he's eating in the lunch area. Does you know he I mean? have his shirt off as often as possible? He's shirtless at baggage claim. <laughs> yeah, it's as real as it gets. As real as it gets. But if a fight breaks out. Okay, let's say we have a um, a fantasy draft. Yep. And you're going to draft, guys, if we all have to get in the octagon. Um, Rock well, number one, or do we have to take him out? If a fight breaks out, the first thing you would see is the bottom of my feet, because I'd be running. <laughs> right? So we're still we're clear. Okay, you're not you're not involved in. That. I'm not I'm not okay. doing it. Um, right. So it comes down to Vin St Statham plays the guy in a movie, right. but he's not a big guy. He's he's not a big guy, but he talks a lot. <laughs> um, he's got a bark. He's got a nice. He's one of them guys with a very loud bark, and it was, whoa, 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 you know, walk by that gate, and then you open up the gate, and then the dog come out. Well, I ain't know you was gonna open the gate, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I I think Vin I think what I was saying, Vin and Dwayne would probably be uh, the most interesting fight, you know. Uh, Van is a street dude. Uh, Dwayne is an ex-wrestler. So they coming into it Ooh. with a very different, you know, it'd be like one of the Gracie brothers versus Tank Abbott. You know, it was like a straight brawler, you know. So I How don't know. How about you against Chris? Me and Chris, I would win. You can well, take well, Luda, Chris? Well, Luda's been doing this thing called 50, 55 blocks or some type of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So I don't know. He might have a shot. But I would kick him. I would kick him in his chest <laughs> and run. <laughs> uh, best car you ever drove? Um, it's probably the car car I have now, uh, which is a two door Rose. Uh, it's my favorite. Did they give that to you? No, somebody else did. Oh, they did. Yeah. But what about in the movie? Um, in the movie, I would say uh, I love the car I have now, the orange Lamborghini. I think the car I had in Furious 7, the last one, I really, I, I wrote out like a formal complaint. You know, it was it was horrible cars. The one I had to jump out of the back of the plane with, I wasn't really crying about the fall. I was crying that I was falling in that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Was it's it like this was prior to the airbags. Your street cred, it was bad for that? Yeah, it was all, it was horrible, that car. I don't even know how it got in the set. I tried to swap it out, and it was like, no, nah, we're sorry. All your stunt doubles already shot with the car, so it's been established. It was horrible. Man, they're so mean on uh, Fast and Furious. The, the <laughs> Fate of the Furious, F8, comes out April 14th with talking to Tyrese. Now, you grew up in Los Angeles. Yeah. Laker fan? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge Laker fan. Lakers. For were the sure. Raiders out there when you were growing up? Yeah, when when yeah, when I was younger, we had the Raiders, um, and then they they moved to Oakland. Yeah. But did you have any interest in being an athlete growing up? Yeah, I was an athlete. Oh, you were an athlete. Yeah, okay. I was an athlete um, until uh, I seen someone sing the national anthem. You know, and then it all changed for me. I like threw my cleats on the floor. I'm just playing. <laughs> no, I, I, I love sports, but I just don't keep up with it as, as much as I used to. How about your favorite uh, anthem performance? Do you have one that stands out that you did? Um, that I did? Yeah. I did an anthem uh, many years back. 
in Philadelphia for the Sixers uh, with uh, with with Allen Iverson. Yeah, that was that was one of my favorites. Wait, what was Iverson doing? I mean, he was playing. Oh, oh, I thought, I thought it was a du- <laughs> That's how long ago it was. Oh, wait, I thought it was a duet with you and Iverson. No, no, oh, no. oh, I was going to say. No, no, he was right there with his head bowed. Because doesn't Iverson have that voice like Tone Loke? Yeah, he's got a deep voice. He yeah. got that, you know, he yeah. got that really gravelly yeah, voice. Right, he right. to do the wild right. thing. <laughs> now, there's two more, two more Fast and Furious coming up. Yeah, we got nine and ten coming down the pipe. Um you know, it's it's pretty serious. And you're not shooting simultaneous. Um, nine and ten might be simultaneously. Oh, okay. uh, I think that's an idea they're throwing around right now. So we'll see what happens. You guys were in Cuba. What was that like? Cuba, Iceland, um, New York. Um, we we touched a bunch of countries. We also uh, were in. Uh, I think we was in Germany at a certain point too. <laughs> You don't um, remember? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's this. We're like the United Nations in this movie at this point, and the National Geographic Channel at the same time, because we're traveling everywhere. But there's something pretty cool about this that I think gets lost on people because we do notice the cars, uh-huh. we notice the women, we mm-hmm. know the action, but the diversity in the movie, yeah, is kind of rare to see a blockbuster like this with this much diversity. Well, diversity is is kind of this big, huge thing. Uh, that everyone is focusing on, corporate America, just all across the board, diversity, which is great, obviously, as a black man that would love as many opportunities as everybody else get. However, we've been on this diversity kick for 15-plus years. I mean, Fast and the Furious has always been diversified, and I think it's one of the bigger reasons why, um, you know, it's it's successful because you get to— tune in and and see someone from your country or someone that looks like you which which makes this franchise even that much more relatable so uh it's beautiful you know and i think i think at the end of it, of the day not every movie or tv show has to like focus on diversity if if it organically makes sense then do it but otherwise to purposely leave out anybody is just it's a little whack especially these days who is the uh, person the actor you won't get in a car with? Let's say we're not on set. Let's say we're just driving the streets in New York. Um, well, it, 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 about a year ago when I first got a, 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 a car, my most recent car, Vin, Vin said to me, hey, man, let me drive. And I was like, cool. Um, Wait, and, you uh, got the car and he wanted to drive? Yeah, he wanted to drive because I guess he knew all the back. We was like in the valley in L.A. and all okay. the canyons and back roads. He knew where to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's the last time I've ever let him drive my car. Nope. Yeah. Well, yeah, he scared the hell out of me. Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't cool, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't cool. It was a very uncomfortable situation. Um, was he in you know, character? As, as a man, you know, you don't really want to show another man that their driving is making you nervous. So I was up in the car, and, you know, yeah, I was doing all that extra stiff, and, <laughs> you know, and he was just listening to music really loud. Um, and he wasn't drunk or anything, but I just didn't really appreciate how he was hitting them corners. And um, I was like, dude, you know, we don't have no directors around or anything. Uh, we're not shooting a scene. Um, and so I didn't really understand why he would go that far. Um, so I haven't let him drive me around in anything, ever. What was your first paid acting gig? My first paid acting gig was like a, a random walk-on on a TV show. From uh, um, it, was, it was from way back when. Well, you have it, Paulie? Oh, my God. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that one. I, yeah, I actually forgot... And the then the uh, the episode, you did an episode of Martin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love Martin. I miss it. I don't think I watched TV since they went off the air. <laughs> Hanging with Mr. Cooper, now he could play hoops. The, 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 the star of Hanging with Mr. Cooper yeah. could play some basketball there. And then uh, Martin Lawrence? Yeah, Martin, is uh, he's a great man. Just a good guy. Funny as hell. Made me feel very comfortable. Them things are always very nervous for a first-timer. I still can't believe to this day I've gotten as comfortable as I have on TVs and movie sets. But back then, man, everything I used to say, I used to, like, overthink. And 
be very nervous, and nothing about it felt natural to me. But if you look at what you, you know, say, singer, songwriter, actor, author, producer, model, like if I told you when you were growing up in L.A., no. you know, which one of those would you have said no way? All of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, here's the thing. You know, I, I love using these type of platforms because you just never know who's tuning in. I think the worst thing you can do is, is surround yourself with dream killers. You know, there's a lot of people that that have all of these visions and goals and, you know, a lot of them are God-sent messages as to what they're supposed to be doing with, with their story and their life. And so as soon as you mention it to your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your family and friends, because they don't have any goals for themselves, their mission is to try and talk you out of your goals. And, and so at a certain point, I had to cut off my dream killers, and that's why my resume looked the way it looks, because these are the things that God had in mind for me, and I can't believe that it's still happening to this day, and I'm just trying to take advantage of my America. Well, there's a lot of people who want to, they don't want you to succeed. They don't want you to get out. Right. They're not getting out. They don't right. want you to get out. Right. You you faced that growing well, up? Well, when, when you get out, um, you know, you, you end up giving people permission to get out because you got out, yeah. you know? So... I think at the end of the day, we could all hold hands and then struggle and hold hands and sing Kumbaya, but one of us has got to fly, and it'll give permission for other folks to fly, you know? What kind of character do you think I'd be in Fate of the Furious? Like, I, I, think, you'd you be, think? I think you'd be like a great uh, radio host, you know? No, I'm just, I'm just like. <laughs> wait, wait. See, you're not letting me out, Tyrese. You're keeping I'm me down. I'm stopping you from flying. <laughs> Come on, uh, career killer. No, no, I think, I think, uh, I think you, you know, you remind me of like a bartender. Um, no, just, just let me finish no, my I pitch. Am. Believe let me, me I hope pitch. there's something better. You remind me of like a bartender okay. with a lot of wisdom. Like you own the bar. Yeah. And people come in front of you and they start drinking uncontrollably and you'd be the guy that'd be like trying to talk them out of these mistakes that they might be making. You got like, you got this wisdom about you, you know? It's a compliment, sir. It's usually the other way around, Tyrese. I'm the one that goes in needing wisdom from the bartender. So just so you know, I'm the one about to do something stupid. What kind of car would I drive? Um, I can see you in something old school. Like going, you know. um, like you know, like a Chevy, like a Chevy with a nice engine, like a '69 Chevelle Just 396. Some, yeah, some fly. Yeah, you know what I'm All saying. Right. I can see you swagging out four speed, but you would you would make sure that your cold car is not old enough to where it doesn't have a heater. You know what I'm saying? You'd you'd have a heater in there. Well, because I got bad circulation, my age is that what you're saying? I gotta I gotta have some heat in you there. Gotta stay warm. Yeah, got it's it. important. Yeah, you, know? it's, the, you live longer yeah, when the, you stay warm. The shorties get in there with me. I gotta keep them warm. Come on, baby. Yeah, yeah, you know it. That's right. He is Tyrese, one of the stars, The Fate of the Furious. It hits theaters next Friday, April 14th. Good luck. Yeah, awesome thank to you. have you. Hey, make sure you guys tune in. Go online to VoltronMotors.com. I just end up releasing some Jeeps. Two of the Jeeps was featured in the Fast and the Furious, VoltronMotors.com. I just want y'all to check them out. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.